everyone. Um, uh, this is our last session in 2022. And um, we are very fortunate to have uh, Jay and uh, Scott, um, like, you know, uh, accepted our invitation and, and uh, do this talk on like, you know, uh, why cycle composable digital experience product are um, good fit. Um, so um, without further ado, I, I'll uh, hand over it to uh, Jape and Scott. Uh, they will introduce themselves and, okay. Floor is yours. Sounds great. Thanks. Thank All you, right. Marjorie. Thanks. Yeah, thanks very much. All right, let's 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 go for it. Before we start though, yeah, thanks so much for inviting us. Happy happy to, to chat. We'll, we'll go through uh, the session here that Jeff and I presented at Symposium. Uh, it's a little bit modified now with things changing and lots of new, even more composable products have been released in Symposium, uh, but we're excited uh, to be here. And afterwards, we, we look forward to questions, just uh, conversations about the session or just things in general. Um, you know, Jeff and I are not product experts, but we've had a, a chance to play with a lot of the composable products and uh, are yeah open to chat about whatever you're interested in. So let's go for it. What we're hoping to do is we really wanted to just introduce Play Summit, uh, talk a little bit about what it is, the concept of it, and uh, have, have that uh, help show why Sitecore's composable products are better together. So let's mm -hmm. get started. Thank you, Scott. Um... Let's introduce us. I'm Jeff Lure. I'm a team lead of the front end part of the Demo Solutions teams here at SciCore. I've been at SciCore for more than three years now, a couple of time MVP before that. So, uh, and also developer on these uh, awesome solutions. Awesome. And I'm Scott Mulligan, product manager on the Demo Solutions team. So I get to work with Jeff every day, which is fantastic. And uh, but Jeff and I represent a bigger team here today, and we're we're proud to represent them for sure. Mm -hmm. For sure. The agenda for today: we will introduce the Play Summit and Play ecosystem. Then we will uh, go see two of the ecosystem users' uh, stories: so Adams and Olivia. And we will see the composable product overview in between. And we will talk about the content, the engagement, and the commerce clouds that uh, Sycor products are into. And then finally, how to get the demos. So let us introduce you to the Play ecosystem. All right, let's start with Play Summit. What is it? Well, the truth is that we made it up and, uh, you know, Play Summit is our fictional digital physical conference concept. And we're really using that concept to help show off Sitecore's composable products. And there's lots coming all the time. So there's lots of ours to do. Next, in general, uh, you'll see that the Play brand is used across lots of different assets. So we're going to introduce a lot of Play Summit stuff. There's Play Shop, uh, but with more and more products coming out, we're using the Play brand to help show a lot of uh, those off. And finally, uh, what you'll see as well is the play demos. We really tried to focus on the storytelling and creating digital experiences, really more on that side compared to, you know, showing off any particular technical feature or anything like that. We really wanted to focus on the storytelling. Yep. And uh, the first persona that we have for Play Summit is Adam. Let's see what Adam does.
So we saw that Adam is a mountain biker. He is the typical customer that we want to attract with the Play brand. We want him to register for our events. We want him to buy our products and everything. So that's the consumer uh, persona. All right, now before we move over to Olivia, who's our second persona, let's take a look at the Composable products uh, overview and see which, one, which products will be in play for our demonstrations today. So first off, weren't things easier when there was only one or two products in the Sitecore ecosystem? Uh, now there's a few more. And here's our, our, our look at the SaaS platform over on the right. Um, what we really wanted to show here is that Today, we're gonna to be focusing on all of the SaaS products uh, that you see in the grid here on the right. And we'll be using uh, Sitecore XM to drive a lot of the experiences. And if you go one more, we also wanted to show that, hey, we, we know there's lots of products coming and at uh, Symposium, these were announced as you might've heard, they finally were officially released uh, just last week. So we have more information about XM Cloud, about Search and Content Hub One that we'll give a little bit later in the session. Uh, but uh, all the other products you'll see in the, the presentations today. Yes. Uh, the next persona is Olivia. Olivia is the organizer of the Play Summit event. She's also the VP of events and marketing at uh, Play. And let's see how she uses uh, those Sitecore products to do her job. I'm Olivia, VP of Events and Marketing at Play Summit, a large outdoor sports and leisure expo that we're taking global. It's our fifth year, and not only do I want to smash the attendance records and increase marketplace sales across our vendors, but this year we're also adding a virtual component. Times have changed, so we need to deliver a memorable experience to make Play Summit the go-to global expo for the outdoors category. This presents a fantastic opportunity, but a huge challenge. How do I create relevant and personalized experiences for all our prospective attendees across all their digital channels and at various stages in their journey? I'm gonna need some help. So I pulled together our crack team to solidify sales goals and nail down our target audiences, enabling us to create personalized omni-channel experiences. To bring the experiences to life, we're using Sitecore. Sitecore enables my team to centrally manage content, experiences, and commerce, which is a really big deal. This is something we've never been able to do before. When we make a change to the schedule or update information about our event, I want my team to be able to do it once and have it update everywhere. And that's what makes Sitecore such a powerful tool. Let me show you what I mean. Meet Adam. Based on his past interactions on our website, we already know that Adam is a mountain biker. He's part of our extreme sports consumer target audience. My team creates content targeting our extreme sports consumers, like Adam, as well as other target personas. But to personalize to Adam, we've created eye-catching mountain bike-themed digital billboards near the trails that he and other riders frequent, and ensure that we've created targeted social media content to run in his geolocation. This will not only help us increase awareness of the event with Adam and other prospects in his region, but promote relevant workshops and the marketplace where vendors will be selling and demoing their latest products to drive conversions. Sitecore enables us to track user actions, visits, and clicks through our content across channels. As Adam interacts with our content, we get a better picture of his interests. With this information, we can balance his customer journey and our overarching priorities by delivering the right content with the right context at the right time. Sitecore also gives us the ability to set up a marketplace where our vendors can manage their offers and catalogs. This allows my team to focus on building personalization rules to help match vendor products with our attendees. Thanks to the Sitecore platform, we can continually update and personalize the experience for Adam and all the other attendees in real time based on their behaviors both online before the event as well as their digital and in-person interactions at the event. And with Sitecore making automated personalized content recommendations in the background, it can trigger a VIP offer to Adam, giving him the chance to attend an early bird demo event and other VIP-only sessions. When Adam checks into the VIP event, we've set up a push notification offering him a 20% discount on any bike purchase that day through the Play Summit Digital Marketplace. 
Sitecore helps us to quickly understand more about each of our attendees so we can make everyone's experience as personalized as Adam's. After the Play Summit ended, we realized just how much Sitecore helped us take the event to a whole new level. I've got a feeling that we'll continue breaking attendance records in the years ahead. Yes, this was Olivia. And we see that she's using all kinds of products from Sitecore, from Content Hub to a lot of other ones. And she's really using the three major clouds, the content, engagement, and commerce clouds. So let's dive into the content cloud. Sounds good, Jeff. Yeah, we're going to take a look at a few uh, demonstrations uh, going through some of the Play Summit uh, demo scenarios we've put together, and we'll start with the content cloud. So the concept for, for this uh, scenario is pretty simple, uh, but it's important. It's the create content once and publish it everywhere. So what we're going to be looking at is you know creating or updating content or assets in Sitecore's content hub and pushing that to all the downstream channels. So like you would have seen in the video, pushing it to the web, the mobile, the TV screens at the conference, all the, all the places that it's uh, getting consumed. So let's take a look at it for the purpose of this uh, scenario. We'll have Sitecore Content Hub and uh, Sitecore XM. So let's start on the Play Summit website. There's lots to explore. Uh, we're gonna start with a list of all the different sessions at the event. And we're gonna focus today on the opening keynote session. It's uh, one of the more important sessions at the event. So here it is opening keynote on the website. Next, let's go take a look at the opening keynote, uh, the same session on a different channel. Uh, so we're going to take a look at, this is our kiosk channel, we're calling it. It could be a kiosk that's maybe at the physical event. Maybe it's beforehand, you can sign up for the event, something like that. And we've been able to look through the schedule and find our opening keynote session on the kiosk. Next, we're going to go take a look at our third and final channel for this demonstration. It's uh, We're calling it the TV channel, the TV app. Uh, the concept here is it might be a TV that's at the event in an atrium showing the schedule, and you can kind of play around with the date and time. There's a nice little flyout menu on the left. Uh, you can also go directly to uh, an individual session, and it'll take you to this screen where the concept is it's maybe a TV hanging outside the room telling you what's going on, what's upcoming. There's QR codes, which Jeff will show you in one of the next demonstrations, which is pretty cool. Um, and I think that's it. We've uh, found the opening keynote on our three uh, different channels. So now let's go update some content and see them updated in real time. So for that, let's jump into Sitecore Content Hub. And this is the Sitecore Content Hub product. It's been skinned uh, to look like Play Summit with the branding and colors. There's everything you'd expect in Content Hub. There's lots of assets uh, to run the Play Summit event. There's this, the speaker images are all stored here, for example. We've also modeled the content for the uh, event. So there's sessions, speakers, vendors, all that different types of data that is stored in Sitecore Content Hub. Uh, we're going to go take a look at this uh, session grid, and we're going to find our opening keynote session, which is the one we were looking at. Here it is. We've clicked on it. We're, we're in our opening keynote session in Content Hub. There's lots of related content, related assets, speakers, content, products, good stuff like that. But today, we just want to do a simple change. So you know, last minute, we need to update the name of the session because it's sponsored by somebody, something important is going on. So let's make a change and we can uh, push that out. We could go through, we have a full workflow set up in uh, Content Hub, or we have sort of a quick publish just to make this demonstration easier. And we can uh, make that change and publish that content out to all of the channels. So with that change, let's go revisit our channels. Let's go through, see our uh, website, kiosk and TV. If we were to go to the website first, we'll do a hard refresh. Nothing too crazy, but we'll we'll be able to bring up our our content or asset changes. We'll go to our kiosk, we have a nice little refresh button, and it'll do the same. Opening keynote sponsored by Striva, and finally we'll go to the TV. Maybe it's hanging outside the the session hall, and we need to get that updated. And we save the day. The sponsor is on on the TV, and everything's good. So that's it for that demonstration. Um, Let's take a, little, a look at, a, just a quick look at what's going on behind the scenes though. You might've uh, been able to follow it, but we wanted to show uh, exactly what's going on. So for this demonstration, it all started in Content Hub. That's where everything was stored. We went and made our update. When we made that update, we have the TV and kiosk app that are pulling content directly from Content Hub. Uh, so right from uh, the Edge API points, uh, API endpoints uh, coming from Content Hub, 
Uh, and those are those two apps, boom, updated. Uh, we wanted to show the workflow for the website, which is a little bit different as a, a different example of how you might uh, use uh, content and have it updated. In this case, we're using a connector to push content and assets from Content Hub directly to Sitecore XM. And from XM, you can do everything you would usually do, including we had it auto-publish the change uh, from XM to the website. So sort of two different ways you could manage the, the end use case. In this case, the website, we're, you know, we're managing the layout, we're making it more marketer friendly. And the TV and kiosk are more uh, developer-owned layouts and just getting content directly from Content Hub. Uh, so that's it for Content Cloud. All right, thank you, Scott. Next is the engagement cloud. And this cloud uh, has the products of CDP and Personalize. And we will also use a little bit of Sitecore Send, Sitecore Content Hub, and uh, Sitecore XM in this demonstration to demonstrate the different uh, personalization that we've done. Um, I think Send is in the eng engagement cloud as well. And uh, in this demonstration, we will show how we track the customers of Play Summit across the different channels that we have and how we deliver the personalized experience to them based on what we know about them. So it can start with the kiosk. The kiosk could be in a sports shop next to the register. And while you wait in line to pay your goods, then you can browse the, the, the event and you can look at the, the different days and the sessions. And in there, uh, you look interested in the, in the event. So you want to buy a ticket directly from the kiosk. And you have three choices. You can buy an online ticket to watch from your home a regular ticket to go there physically and a VIP ticket physically as well, but with some other advantages. Right now, you don't know what really are the advantages of the VIP ticket. So you choose the regular one and you continue. You identify yourself, you would pay, uh, put your credit card information. So for this demo purpose, we don't have credit card processing and everything, but after you receive a QR code, thank you, uh, here's your purchase. And if you scan that QR code with your phone, then it goes to the website of Play Summit and it will identify yourself because we know you, who you are. We have put your information in CDP already. So by clicking on the QR code for the demo, if you do it to, uh, customer. Uh, it will copy the link to your clipboard and you can open a new browser tab and paste it. And Or you can scan the QR code with a real device. So when scanning it, we see in the blue bar at the top, uh, welcome to Play Summit, Mary, because Mary just bought the ticket. And we also know uh, where she's visiting from in that current session. And then uh, if at the event I'm going to uh, see a, a session and right in front of the, the room, there's a TV, I can scan the QR code there again. And when I scan from the same phone, it knows I am Mary and it knows that Mary has a regular ticket, not a VIP ticket. And if she's in front of a, a room where there's premium session ongoing or the next session is a premium session. And she scans that session QR code, go to the website and see the premium session page. Then it will show a VIP ticket upsell scenario that we've configured in Personalize for her to upgrade to a VIP ticket and then can assist to the session she's interested into. Uh, let's dismiss that. Um, offer for now and go back to the sessions list page. Uh, when you visit five sessions page or five times the session listing page, then there's a pop-up to sign up for email updates that shows in the corner. And that pop-up, we filled in the fields for Mary in that case, 
uh, in order to augment the chances that we will convert that visitor into a subscriber for the email uh, list. So all little de details that we can do if we know about the customer and the visitor uh, by storing their information in CDP. So there's more chances that she will subscribe if she doesn't have to fill the form again. And if she does subscribe, then she's added into an automation plan in Sycor Send where she receives uh, emails from Play Summit. All that story starts with CDP and personalize. And with CDP, we use bidirectional uh, information between the website and CDP and only unidirectional with the kiosk app. So both the website and the kiosk uh, log into CDP, the page visits, the email using uh, name, first name, last name, and things like that uh, to build up the profile of our guests. And the website also reads from CDP to know the first name, last name, email. Uh, when we show a form, we try to pre-fill the fields with that information. Also, the website uses personalized, so web experiences, uh, web experiments, full stack experiences as well, and things like that to provide the blue bar, to provide the um, home carousel or the home hero personalization based on what type of sessions you visited last uh, and the pop-up and the different VIP upsell experiences. And lastly, uh, Send is connected directly to Personalize. So we have configured a connection in Personalize that adds someone to an email list in Send. So whenever uh, there's a special event sent to CDP, then there's a automatic flow that starts in Personalize, adds that person to the Send mailing list, and then the automation in Send uh, for the email. There's one question in the chat. Uh, Jake and Chris. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we asked uh, Jake, the the MC for the Sycor Symposium. We asked him directly if we could add the, his name, picture, and bio in <laughs> Play Summit, and he accepted. So that was really that's a fun that's, touch that we. That is funny. We we had someone uh, come up with the names, not our team, and they put it in a Chris Williams name, uh, unrelated but funny, and so we yeah. kept it uh, for sure. <laughs> it's not the same Chris Williams. <laughs> So that's the story of uh, Engagement Cloud. Uh, next, we can go to the Commerce Cloud. And this one is covering the products from Sycor Discover and Sycor Order Cloud. And we will see how in the Play ecosystem, we've built a full shop that uses both products to drive product discovery, product suggestions, uh, finding the products through search box and everything search page as well as the complete checkout experience with a cart, with uh, users and everything. Um, this starts uh, in the Play Summit. There's a link to the shop in the main navigation that goes to a completely different site. So we don't attach the shop only to Play Summit. It's not a shop related to the conference. It's like the Play brand is an online and physical uh, network of shops that organize also a conference. So that's how we played it. When you go to the play shop, then on this sub section of the website, uh, everything you see on the homepage is driven by Sycor Discover. The search box at the top is a Discover widget. The trending categories in the middle are a Discover widget, as well as all the other things below, the trending products, the recently viewed products, and everything. When I type in the global search box, you see there's uh, auto search based on uh, the keywords I type, so uh, search as you type. It also has query suggestions, uh, by the did you mean in the left column. So it 
it's also able to understand I've made typos or the words I'm typing are not in the index. So it suggests me corrected queries. And it also understands uh, the typos. So if I type golf uh, with a typo, it still shows me uh, golf related products in, in there. Then if I uh, go to one of the did you mean queries, it auto corrects the query in my search box and it shows me the full search page. The full search page is a discover widget as well. It's just a big one with multiple features. It has facets, sort by, pagination and everything. Uh, number of results per page if I'm correct as well. Then if I go back to that uh, search box and click on a suggested category instead, then I go to the category listing page. In fact, it's the same exact Discover widget. It's a full search page widget. It just filtered on a specific category. And as we know, we are filtered on a category. We display a blue bar with the category information in there as well. But it's exact same thing. Additionally to that, uh, after the search page, we display a couple of other widgets. If we click on a product, then we go to the product detail page. This one is managed by uh, Order Cloud. It's completely different. It's the same catalog in both products uh, in the demo. We have sync feature between both uh, only when we create the demo instance on the demo portal. We'll get back to that later. But uh, if you are to update the products in Order Cloud after, they don't sync to uh, Discover. Uh, in there, the Can pictures. I ask a question? The... Yes. If you're, um, so the widget that you showed before uh, showing price, is that price coming from Order Cloud or from Discover? No, it's in Discover. Yeah. Everything from the okay, widget so... is in Discover. Everything in the product detail page is from Order Cloud. Okay. So if there are pricing schedule or something like, you know, you have a promotion or something, how how that will be dealt with? There, this is not dealt uh, with for now. It's just a demo. Okay. It's, yeah, no, it's I'm definitely, just, I'm... yeah, absolutely get get the point though. And uh, it's an area that the, the both products are trying to sort of combine on a unified catalog. So that's definitely a top priority for them so that you wouldn't have to, worry about that, but the question is still valid. Even if that happens, mm -hmm. like there is a possibility that you might be using Sitecore Discover with another system or order cloud with another system. Um, so it's tricky. I mean, that obviously the APIs are there to do real-time syncing. We did not do real-time syncing. We did sort of a one-time syncing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty yeah. much I mean, that I, story. Yeah, I understand like, you know, these are two different, two different system, but in the real life like you know the um, seller will take advantage of all this pricing and promotion yeah um, like you know features in in the commerce very usual things to do but yeah yeah Thanks. in the real life uh, what would happen is you would have the either head start seller UI to do the promotions and price schedules and you would likely modify the code of this seller UI. So as you save those price schedules or promotions, you at the same time modify the products in Discover to match what you've just configured in your uh, selling backend. The reality yeah. here yeah. with the demo is that we can uh, create an order cloud marketplace for each demo instance that is created on the demo portal. However, Sitecore Discover doesn't have this auto serve ability to create new domains as, as we want. So we have a single shared Discover domain that is used mm -hmm. across all the demo instances. So we cannot have any one modified products there. They are fixed managed by the demo team and cannot be updated. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. well, thank you. When yeah, Sitecore question. Discover allows to have multiple uh, domains for everyone's needs, 
then we will be able to modify the demo to for each demo to have its discover and order cloud or merge catalog. I don't know what the reality will be at that point and allow mm -hmm. additional scenarios like that, like changing the price, it changes everywhere, changing the image the title, it changes everywhere and so on. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So as I was to mention, everything on that page is uh, order cloud, including the description, the price, the quantities available, uh, the, the category and the parent categories and the image and everything. But we also added some Discover widgets below. So customers also bought similar products and recently viewed products are all by Discover. The mini cart and the full cart are uh, order cloud managed. Uh, so currently, yes, and promotions also that works. Uh, we have five or six different promotions that work with specific products like uh, bike lights and things like that. On the shopping cart, even if the shopping cart itself is managed by Order Cloud, we can also put Discover widgets below. Uh, and if we proceed to checkout, we have added uh, authentication and uh, user accounts with the help of Auth0 and Order Cloud, both together to allow to log into your existing account, create an account at checkout or before, or continue as a guest if you want. Let's log in with my account uh, for demonstration purposes. And after I'm logged in, I'm redirected to the full page checkout where I can see my saved addresses in the shipping address uh, box on the right and same at the billing address. And our users can also uh, create saved payment methods in their account section. Uh, top right, there's a, an account button and so on. So I'll stop the demo there. I won't go to the full uh, checkout experience entering all the information, but we have a couple of delivery options. We have a couple of uh, delivery types. So if you choose delivery, there's regular express with different pricing. All of that is fake information, but it updates the price of the total order and uh, it works. Pick up from a store and pick up from Summit are not implemented at the moment. We still left the options uh, in the UI just for demo purposes. So this commerce cloud uh, scenarios all start with the shop website. The shop website is connected to Discover to drive all the widgets. So it reads from Discover for getting the, the products to display in the different widgets. It also writes to Discover. So we write to Discover page views to have good analytics in Discover. We also write a couple of other events like a user logged, user identification, uh, we track also the purchases in Discover to have good analytics about the revenues and the markup we are doing on the products, things like that. We are also using Order Cloud for the product detail page, the cart, and so on. So we read from Order Cloud and we write to Order Cloud. Uh, so we, we write all the products added to the cart and uh, the saved addresses and saved credit cards all in order cloud. We also write to order cloud for the purchases, the, the cards and so on. Order cloud is connected to Auth0 for the authentication mechanism. And we also use the CDP in the shop website. So same CDP instance as on the summit website. We track all the page views, we track the orders, we track uh, identification uh, and so on. Even in the guest checkout form, uh, we ask for an email address of the user. If we already know the user from the Play Summit uh, sessions, then we prefill the checkout form with your email addresses. All right. Thanks, Jeff. Good demos. Thanks. All right. So now to uh, my favorite part, the best part, Hopefully, how, how to get the demos? How do you start playing with them, get your hands on them? So 
Uh, there's a few things, but let's start with the demo portal. If you hadn't seen it already, we wanted to introduce the concept of the Sitecore demo portal. Uh, we've been using it internally for a while and was released more publicly uh, roughly six months ago. But the idea here, the whole concept is that you can come here and get started with Sitecore very easily. You can get up and running with a Play Summit demo, a Play Shop demo, without having to really know too much about Sitecore, how to deploy it, all that fancy, crazy stuff. Uh, with a few clicks, you could get Play Summit up and running. And also more, more options to connect different products and things like that, which is very cool. But to start with, uh, so who has access to the demo portal? First, Sitecore Partners, uh, which is great. And the, the process here would be uh, someone from the partner uh, company would request access uh, from the partner manager. After that first request, it's more of a self-serve uh, way where you can uh, add other people from your organization and they can go get their own demos and stuff like that. So Sitecore Partners, Sitecore MVPs, Makes sense and Sitecore employees, all of the employees of Sitecore also get access to this uh, portal right now. It's kind of funny, like even one of the uh, other main goals of the portal is to get people more familiar with the composable products. And that goes for Sitecore employees as well. There's lots of new products and they need to learn about it just like us. So um, that being said with the partners, M MVPs, employees, it's not trying to be discriminatory towards you know someone who might not be fitting one of these. So maybe you're a customer, and uh, the truth is that just at this point, you know, we receive some pushback about making this completely open to everyone. Uh, from you know, you can kind of imagine people who are brand new to the Sitecore ecosystem. Uh, it, it could be difficult to go into the Sitecore product and find your way around. You know, the, the concept would be that a partner is somewhat more trained and would be able to jump in, take a look and present this to others, like maybe their customers and, and things like that. So that's the demo portal. Um, let's see, what's next? Right, okay, so if, if you do not have access to the demo portal or you wanna get started with um, the code from a GitHub repo, it's right here, it's uh, open, available. This is where we work in, uh, so it's quite active and you'll see us there uh, a lot of the time. Um, the other thing is that uh, Jeff has done a great job documenting how to get started with this demo with a local Docker setup, and you'll find all the documentation right in the GitHub repo. So good stuff. Right, next, we did show the Play Summit demo template that is for Content Hub. And we did want to mention that if you have access to the Content Hub sandbox portal, that you can spin up uh, this demo. Uh, it's one of the templates available to you, and you can go check it out. It's a great standalone demo to see what can be done with Content Hub. Yeah, so, all right. <clears throat> so guys, um, if I want to like, you know, add features to the Play Summit, mm -hmm. so I um, I can go, like now I have to take the uh, GitHub repo and like, you know, set up my machine and then then work on it, right? Will uh, Sitecore accept that? Like, you know, can I get, create peers and like, you know? Most of the time, and... yes. Yeah. I, I would recommend uh, anyone wanting to contribute to first tell us about your idea, maybe open an issue in mm -hmm. the GitHub repo in the first place. Maybe we already have a task for it in our backlog, or maybe we have already started on that. Uh, uh, so not to duplicate any effort, then uh, we will also validate the idea. If it's like, for example, integrating with a third party that has nothing to do with Sitecore, example, Covio. Uh, we've done that in the past, not always the best. So in this Play Summit demo, we try to focus solely on the Sitecore products uh, mm -hmm. with the, the new cloud products or not. Um, so depending on what your idea is, uh, we will say, yes, go go for it and do it. Or we will uh, have a discussion about it. Yeah, that would be yeah. fantastic. Right. Actually, I, it's, I haven't looked in a while, but I think Jeff did a good job documenting how to contribute as well. So at least there's some yeah. some guidelines, but that's, that's a good idea. Just uh, chat with us and we're usually quite excited. So that's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you're looking for contributions, ideas, 
uh, drop us a, an email, a note, a Slack message, uh, something. Say, hey, I want to contribute to, to something the demo team is doing. And we will look in the backlog and uh, give you a couple of uh, ideas we have. There's not enough time for us to do everything we would want <laughs> with these demos. No, that, this is this is great. Uh, I mean, especially the demo portal and the like. You know, code is available, um, so it's really helpful for us to actually take it to customer and talk to them and like you know show them how things work together. Uh, so, yeah. so I mean, uh, also like you know, the reason I'm asking is sometimes customers they have some requirement like you know which you you will not be able to like you know cover everything under the sun probably um so so they then we create some sort of poc and things and so like you know okay for your this kind of customization you need to really try this way and we can expand on that and add to the to the demo yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. definitely Great. thank you Awesome. Um, yeah. All right. So coming, what's up next? I'll let Jeff take it away, but XM Cloud, Sitecore Search, Content Hub 1. Let's see. Yeah. That's the three things coming soon for the, the demo team. In fact, uh, we have started in all three already. We are happy to say that XM Cloud is pretty much ready. Uh, it's not in the same repository as the repository we just uh, showed, which was sycard.demo.edge. The reason is because the XM Cloud version of the demo used different uh, Docker images, different Docker files, different uh, everything for the base stuff. It's not using XM per se, it's using a special XM for XM Cloud, and it doesn't have Horizon, it doesn't have many of the containers like, uh, no, not XConnect, that's not even there <laughs> on XM, but you, you get the point. Um, so we needed an extra repository for that. And it's the pretty much exact same code base for the front end uh, application. Uh, we are likely working on this Play Summit uh, repo for all the new features like SciCore search integration. We will do it for XM Cloud. We'll not do it for the Edge repo. So already we see uh, some separation of features across both. For everything commerce, we continue with Edge at the moment. Uh, this is where we've developed the commerce part. And we have not enabled commerce on this XM Cloud Play Summit repo yet. Even if the code is there, we haven't tested the features on top of XM Cloud. And the other big difference between the Edge and the XM Cloud version of the demo is the use of LSXXA in the XM Cloud version. As XM Cloud really tried to get the customers to use headless SXA, we've made the transition to it. So we've modified the content tree structure. We have the tenant in this site, and we've modified all the pages to use uh, page, um, page designs and partial designs and things like that, really embracing the headless SXA uh, mentality and way of working. So we cannot really and easily transfer the new stuff we do in the XM Cloud repo to the Edge repo because it's really not the same uh, Sycor items and file structure and everything. So we try sometimes to do features in both, but the XM Cloud version will see the latest and greatest. And in a couple of months of years, maybe we will put the Edge repo uh, on pause or just support it, but no new features. Speaking of new features, Sycor Search. Yesterday, I merged the pull request for the Sycor Search integration into the XM Cloud uh, version of the demo. So it's now in the develop branch. It's not yet released in the main branch and available in the demo portal, but it will uh, be 
in some time. I still have to create the integration in the demo portal for people to be able to enable or disable Sitecore search when deploying a demo instance. So uh, that's coming. You can see a screenshot uh, of a preview of the full search page uh, and the search box is in the header part. And this is a first version. Uh, it's not optimal in my uh, search expert opinion. Uh, <laughs> I have a couple of uh, features I would like to have there, but uh, some of them are pushed to phase two or a little bit later for this integration. And the last thing we are working on is a Content Hub 1 demo. Uh, Content Hub 1 will not be integrated into the Place Summit or Place Shop demos uh, that we already have, nor to the TV or kiosk applications. Um, we will instead create a separate standalone Next.js site or application called Play Media. And this will show a ton of articles about uh, athletes or events. It will not be an event system like the conference. It will just be articles. It's like a blog, but a little bit uh, better than a blog. So it will have a nice grid showing all the different articles. It will have an athlete section, which you will be able to discover about the athletes sponsored by the play brand, as well as articles talking about them and things like that. It will be a separate GitHub repository that we are currently setting up. Uh, so once it's set up, uh, it will be a public repository where you will be able to see uh, the code of that demo. And uh, hopefully, uh, the main, the goal is to serialize all the content we have in Content Hub 1 and allow anyone from the repo to deserialize the content into their Content Hub 1 uh, tenant or projects. And you will be able to replicate the Play Media uh, content and work, uh, work with the site locally with your own content and you will be able to change the content and uh, do all the demo stories around it uh, yourself or host it on Versa on your own and things like that. Don't make it the new Habitat starter kit. No, the demo team is not doing any starter kit anymore. <laughs> and every time we create a repo, we put a disclaimer, this is not a starter kit. But uh, one other thing, we are working on some starter kits. So similar to Vercel, <laughs> where yeah. they have a, a blog starter kit and a commerce starter kit and things like that. So Sycor as a whole, including the demo team, uh, we are all together working on examples, demos, and starter kits. For example, uh, in XM Cloud, there's a starter kit to start a uh, project with SXA. It has no content. It just has a couple of components and a Docker structure to be able to deploy to XM Cloud. So we will likely create a couple of starter kits that uses our different products, but with no pages, just the boilerplate for connecting the different products together uh, as starter kits. And that's it. That was the Play ecosystem. Uh, thank you very much for uh, attending the session with us today. And uh, we hope you will have fun uh, looking at the repositories, playing with the Content Hub template uh, and or the demo uh, portal to spin some of the, these demos. And we are now open to questions. For sure. For sure, thanks, right. Jeff. Good, good job. I have one one interesting thing to share. Just I'll, I'll drop a link in the chat. Uh, it was really a lot of fun to work on the the Adam and Olivia videos, the videos we showed earlier. Specifically, the Adam video where there was a real mountain biker that was taken out. Into, uh, he's uh, some sort of media, uh, social media personality, and he went out into the woods and did these jumps, and it was filmed. Uh, so there's a really cool uh, behind the scenes making of the Adam video and I'll put a, a link. Uh, you can look at it at your leisure, but it was super fun and exciting as someone who knows nothing about video to be a part of. So take a watch. Awesome. 
So we'll open up for the questions. Does anyone have any questions? I have one or two, but I will let other people talk here. Okay, um, so I'll go first then. Um, so any thoughts on Jamstack? Jamstack, but everything yeah. we do now is Jamstack, basically. Uh, the Play Summit, Play Shop, TV, Kiosk are all Next.js. They use Sycor APIs to connect with GraphQL to different content repositories to get the content. And it's all TypeScript, JavaScript, APIs, and markup. So, yeah. So, That's, is yeah. it like, you know, are you saying that it is creating the static HTML? And the, I, I understand them, the GraphQL. Yeah. Oh, yeah, really? Play Shop. Yeah, I thought Play Shop is doing a static, it's doing a SSG, so static site generation for a Play Summit. Play Shop, because of the product detail page and category page, we're doing a server side rendering or client side rendering for those. I think it's client. So we look at the URL and we query to get the product details. TV and kiosk, they are statically generated. But they do GraphQL queries at each page change uh, in order for the edit ones and see everywhere uh, things to work all the time. So every time you go back to a TV, then it does a new GraphQL query to fetch the content for that TV at that day, at that hour, to be sure it has the latest from Content Hub. But uh, under the cover, the, the page is kind of statically generated, but refresh the content uh, on the client. Okay, so so you are using the one demo that you did is Maddie actually uh, purchased a ticket, and uh, basically that using the NestJS middleware to send data to CDP. No, uh, the data is sent directly from the front end with out the middleware it's using just uh oh yeah we, we did create our own type of middleware that's true uh, because to save data extensions in cdp it needs to be an authenticated call so what we've done mm -hmm. we've created an api root on their pages in our next.js application that's called cdp and it's kind of our proxy. So we send a request to that proxy and then it forwards it to uh, to CDP with the authentication needed and then it returned the response. Okay. Back. So any, instead of using edge? middleware, we created our own proxy. Okay. Any because uh, the middleware yeah. happens at page load, it like it handles the pages before they are sent to the client. Right. Okay, I, I see. Yeah, that, that's right. Um, any any uh, age personalization happens here? No. Not yet in that demo, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay, last question. What, uh, what will be Content Hub's role in the new architecture, like you know, with XM Cloud and Content Hub One, all these things that you are doing, what role Content Hub will play? Uh, yeah, it's currently. Yeah, do you want to go, Scott? Yeah, sure. I'll go first. Um, so, yeah, right now, one of our main goals of of the demo portal was just to tell the story of Content Hub connected to XM originally, and the fact that you could author a lot of content or assets. In Content Hub, so you might have teams that solely work in Content Hub and never log into Sitecore like XM. So there was, you know, a lot of that story which we built out, and all of it is applicable uh, with XM Cloud. Uh, we're, we're actually, especially with with ourselves, sales engineers within the company, are really trying to tell the same story right now, where you could have people who manage content and assets in Content Hub, and it's connected to XM, and you could have other teams that work in there, and they can. Uh, easily access the assets or the content. Um, so, admittedly, like the the actual naming of things has confused a lot a lot of things in general. With Content Hub One coming out, 
in general, we don't, that doesn't affect the, the content hub and the Sitecore XM story. And there'll be different stories uh, around content hub one, but very, just in general, pretty similar. We're, we're try, still trying to tell the story of people managing stuff in content hub and people managing stuff in XM cloud separately. Yeah. yeah. The, the content hub connector we know for XM is installed on all XM cloud environments and projects already, uh, but can be enabled or disabled with environment variables. So uh, we still Good use point. The, the connector in the demo version for XM cloud and it works uh, flawlessly. Thank you. Right, we are on the top of the hour, one minute uh, over. Uh, does anyone else have any questions? Okay, thanks so much, Scott and Jeff. This was a very um, detailed and enlightening um, session about the architecture and like, you know, the way Sitecore product works. And uh, we have recorded it, we will share it. Uh, thanks for doing this. Thank you. Awesome. And happy happy new year. We if we have talked yet, talk again, like you know, yeah. over Slack and things. And uh, Merry Christmas. Thank you. Happy holidays to everyone. Happy holidays. Thanks everyone. Good to see you. Good to